Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, for Nerds, by Nerds, hanging out with these nerds. Scott Garibay. And I'm Nerdarchist Ted. And today we're going to be talking about what happens when Pathfinder goes to 2nd edition. Don't forget the Nerdarchy newsletter. It's a great way to learn, uh, to get great gaming tips from the Nerdarchy crew, to learn how to game with the Nerdarchy 2 crew. It's a wonderful weekly resource. So the question is, Pathfinder, it's, what has it been around, for about six years now? Oh, easily. Um, so it, it came out right before 4th uh, edition. And I think it's probably around seven or eight now, easily. Okay, yeah. so so it, it's getting age. It's oh, going yeah. to no start question. showing its age. Yeah. Now, this is really tricky, because Paizo... Yo, know, has has a decision to make. Like, it, yeah. it's almost like I, it's almost unheard of for a long-standing role-playing game yep. not to get a new edition eventually. Right. right, I totally agree. Here's here's the problem. If you're a if you're one of the guys that switched the Paizo because you hate Watts for coming out with a new edition, exactly. You know. Uh, so, so do you love Paizo enough to accept a new edition, or you're like, oh, they sold out too? You know, yeah. How, you know, what is that going to be like? And the other, the other. So then there's the people that came in afterwards and they started with Pathfinder. Maybe not such a big big deal for that crowd. Uh, the way I would summarize what you just said is, can they? Should they? So the first question is, do you, having seen what you what having seen the Pathfinder community, do you think they can sell a second edition to that community or? Is that community so dedicated to staying with the old edition? What do you think? I, th I think with anything, there is always the possibility to put out a new edition. Easiest way to look at this, go on Facebook. You're going to find groups for first edition D&D, second edition D&D, third edition D&D, 3.5, fourth, fifth. You're going to find groups for Pathfinder. All of them have a solid market of people who continually play with that set of rules. Now, should they? Well, that, that begs the, the, the question because what happens when that ha or what what's going to happen when they do that? Their market is going to split. There are the people who are going to, as with everything else, say, you know what? I don't want to move on to another set of rules. I don't want to go buy new books. I don't want to have to learn a new rule system. The, How do it, I convert my character from this edition to that edition? So Pathfinder is really just a doubling down on third edition. Oh, right. yeah, it's D&D 3.75. Yeah, absolutely. so does Pathfinder creating a second edition cause another company to come in and basically create the next Pathfinder? <laughs> <laughs> How do you triple down on third edition? So actually, that that's my answer. I think, um, and the reason why I wanted to do... You you know why I wanted to talk about this is I think Paizo cannot do a second edition and the reason why is uh, at this point I think they've taken I think we can all agree they've probably taken a blow from D&D 5th edition I think they would have been really blessed if 5th edition had failed 5th edition I, did not 5th edition did not fail it's 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 taking off people love it and I, I talk to people you know here and there that are you know steadfast Pathfinder players and they like what's there now, I don't know all the nuances of why they got into into Pathfinder, whether they were one of the crowd that says, well, you know what, I tried fourth and I didn't like it, or whether they were the, well, I don't want to switch and I'm going to stick with this. Or it's their first game. It's, or it's their know, first it's game. So, you know, there's, there's all these different options. Now, I, I think if they do a new edition, there's going to be people that that stick with the, the set of rules, they're not buying new books, and they have to be like every other group that's out there other than the current that are saying, well, I'm just not going to get a new book. But so, there, there is tons of Pathfinder stuff out there. They don't really need to go to a new <laughs> a new game as a group, as players, because Correct. they have enough to go forever. The, there, mean, there's there's a stack of Pathfinder books that I can hide behind. Yeah, Let me say something, too. Us as Nerdarchy and, and Scott, we actually, we're fans of D&D, but the truth of the matter is, we actually are just fans of rpgs that's true and Absolutely. we play we we like to play a lot of different games exactly. now what i find in both pathfinder and D, most of those people never leave that you know never leave those games they never play anything it else it's pretty common it's true. um you know so when i'm when i'm having a discussion with somebody and and this happened you know uh, a while ago and w once once basically we're discussing fifth edition and pathfinder and I'm like, well, what do you play? What else have you played? Or do you play? And when they say, oh, nothing. When they say nothing, I almost disqualify 
them, them have, having any merit to offer to the discussion because the simple fact is like they only know D and D style games, right? And, and you know, and there's so much more out there, and there's like I, even among really our own is. fan base, like we're like, hey, we talk about some just throw with fifth edition. I'm like, that's a stupid idea because there's other games that do it better, right? Like, you know, there's different reasons to play different games. Um, like and in this sense, it's like Pathfinder is the crunchiest version of D and D oh, ever. Absolutely. Yeah. So, go, you know, going full circle back to Pathfinder Second Edition, how do they come up with a new one? What do they do? How do you make that crunchier? Or if you go lighter, that there will be Pathfinder fans that are dissatisfied because I know players that went to Fifth Edition, played it for a while, and they were dissatisfied. They wanted the options and choices of Pathfinder. Well, and my take is, I understand where you're coming from, that you can you can always do a new edition, mm -hmm. but we, we've we seen in the role-playing game industry that there's times where you should not. Fourth Edition was unmitigated a mistake. It took them a lot of time to fix that mistake, and they had See, to re-establish the community. Uh, the Fourth Edition at a concept needed to be done. There were issues with, with 3.5, there were balance issues, there there were things that were just, you know, misworded or or done incorrectly. And I felt after the amount of time, the amount of things that they that they essentially messed up on, they needed to make a fourth edition. And they decided I don't know who, who made the call, but they decided to say let's do something different. And they tried to sell a game that was going to rely very heavily on miniatures, that, that was going to essentially push the, the video game market along with it, and it was not the huge success that they were hoping it to be. Now, there are people that still play 4th, there's people that, that will you know swear hands down that 4th is better than 5th, and if that's your opinion, you're entitled to it. I disagree. 4th edition got Alaska. And when I say Alaska, they, they used it to build a bunch of bridges, but the problem is those bridges went to nowhere. Yeah. You know, yeah. so so yeah. so it, it really hurt them in that sense. It was well, a learning ex it was a learning experience. Businesses and, hate learning experiences where they lose Well, money. and that's that's what I'm talking about. So with, with, if we're talking about Pathfinder, you're talking about Paizo. Mm -hmm. Paizo is a real company. This is not a guy building a role-playing game on in his free time. It's, you know, it's not is, a handful of guys sitting right. in the basement this talking about This is at least, stuff. you know, 10, 20 people you know, with an actual building and an actual building, you know, an actual business structure that they have to keep um, paychecks rolling. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. And so, basically, right now they're playing with a remnant of of the fantasy tabletop role playing game community. If they cut, take that remnant and they cut that even by a fraction, even if they learn, lose a third, if they lose two thirds. Do you really keep those doors open? I really feel they cannot do a yeah, second it, edition. It hurts. Right? Like yeah. my biggest yeah. thing is, where do you go? Like, right. what do you do? Exactly. You, you like you know, yeah. Pathfinder has so much bloat to it, and it's su such a unwieldy giant beast. Yeah. Uh, you know, do you go rules lighter? Well, their community has spoken. They don't want rules lighter. Right. Uh, you know, yeah. do you go rule? Can you? Is there any actually way to go rules heavier? <laughs> like, well, so the, I think there is a place to go. So one of the things is I do not think they should do a Pathfinder Second Edition. What I think they should do is they should do Pathfinder rules, saying we own this rules. This is a valuable rules engine. Branch in other genres. Right. Exactly. Exactly, and that, so I would go into science really fiction. Yeah. Exactly, and I and I think it's really time for them to build new games and new worlds on their current engine and say this is a valuable engine, and we want to push it and 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 declare its value and give value by doing more genres. Sure, I mean Absolutely. they have a horror book coming out, but they could do a horror genre. They right. could do the, and, the, and, and science fiction, but and it's, they could do superheroes. And like, here's the thing, right? If you do, you know, if you go into like new new genres, you get to add new rules and more crunch. Exactly. <laughs> the problem the problem with those ideas speaks back to what you said just a couple minutes ago. Pathfinder players and typically D and D players, they don't want to play those other games. Well, see, that's just it. Is I would not go. So actually, I've sold two thirds of my Pathfinder books. Mm -hmm. I've kept books that I could not get rid of them because I love them so much <laughs> and I still have the core rule book and a few others. Uh, NPC Codex is fantastic. <laughs> uh, but also, along those lines, if they brought out a, uh, a, sci a space opera Pathfinder game, I would absolutely go ahead and buy that, and the reason why, even though, and the reason why is there isn't a D and D space opera book, right? And so, so that's a great way to to carve off D and D five E fans, um, in back into their fold, and so and, new and, genres will and get. Here's that. the thing, too, right? 
if you if you if you use the same engine and the rules are all interchangeable and they work together, yeah, exactly. there are people that will take that stuff and buy it just to just Hit to dissect it, it put yeah. it back into put it into their fantasy game. Right. Um, I, but I think it would be a stronger move than a second edition. And not only yeah. that too, like people are just huge Paizo fans. Like, oh, um, I so, am so, hugely. Yeah. So there, there's a good possibility that people that aren't into those genres will check it out to support Paizo. Right? Yeah, um, and also if you're. And, Go ahead. And you also have, uh, you know, as you call me the completist, it's like, well, I've got to buy it just because it's, you know, another book. Absolutely. Says, says that, that strip on the cover, or says Pathfinder, uh, all right, add it to the collection. I mean, if you look at uh, Lewis Porter Jr., he, that's what he uh, primarily does, is try to add more and more science fiction into into the into the Pathfinder system with his stuff. And also the superhero genre. He's melting oh, yeah, yeah, the superhero well. genre in there, which I think is a great blend. Um, also, along those uh, along those idea along with those ideas, I would highly suggest people go out and check out Paizo because I feel when it comes to Dungeons and Dragons um, miniatures and supplies, they're one of the best companies out the there. The accessories, so yeah. The pawn sets are are fantastic and can easily be used in any fantasy role playing game, D and D five e easily. Uh, and the pawn sets, there's hundreds of them out there. They're they're great. Tons of flip mats. Uh, absolutely. The flip mats are grand, fantastic. They also have a, a, a small section of maps. These maps that are actually, um, they're made out of like cardboard stock, and mm. they come like this. They're $13, and they, they have dozens and dozens and dozens of them, easily convertible into e to any, not even convertible, like they, they, they slot directly into to any RPG. 5 e games. You don't have to do any conversion. Um, and... The the map systems these 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 um the they're I think they're about like eight eight inches by five inches maybe uh, you know a little smaller and then they they actually tile together. There is no equivalent on the D and D five E side uh, like not on the five E side but yeah. Watts did a bunch of those. I, I the old ones of, yeah. in fourth in fourth edition you're absolutely fourth right. And I think maybe third maybe it was all fourth. Yeah, no, but there was a bunch of them. And yeah. you're absolutely right. And so one of the reasons is really check out Paizo's stuff. And the reason why is. The ones that Paizos did are cheaper and better and more range. Okay. So they, they cover rooftops and harbors and cities, and they go much, much broader than they ever did with the 4th edition maps. And because they're thinner, they are cost less money. And well, so, the yeah. other two, well, like on the miniature side of things, actual minis, I'm kind of displeased with what Watts has done recently with their miniatures lines. I used to enjoy the sets that they came out with. It wasn't such a bad, it wasn't a bad price for the value. Like it was like third or fourth edition ish. It, it, but but it, now you get five minis for like fifteen bucks. Four like, or eh. five. Yeah. yeah. It's, it. Uh, I I'm a big fan of miniatures. I've spent countless dollars on you know D D minis and i've got a, a bunch of pathfinder minis as well and I, I don't have anything wrong with the the actual stuff from from pathfinder minis that i've gotten and but i have to 100 percent agree with you dave the the cost per mini for for the 5e minis it i've just i've kind of looked away from it yes. yeah they've outsourced yeah. it it's not and yeah you know, so it's not affordable for us as players or it's not worth it the value's not there you absolutely if you buy you better buy it in bulk and from amazon to get the best price you can possibly get yeah. you know to make it remotely well uh worth it and they're not as good as they used to be like yeah, yeah the, i mean there, there's some quality of them, there, there's some of them that are 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 really nicely done if i'm paying a um, premium i want the all to be nicely done yeah yeah but you know going back to this video is about what what do we think about uh second edition pathfinder i think we've thoroughly covered that you know uh, you know we i think i personally i agree with scott it would be a mistake the, their fans are not going to like that and i don't really even know where they would go with it so i do have a question for oh, you absolutely. You, you have the most robust miniatures collection of any of us okay you have whiz kids You've uh, you, at our D and D five Eve table. You've used some Whiz Kids mm -hmm. uh, minis. You, you used Pathfinder minis. Mm -hmm. You used Dungeons and Dragons different version minis, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yep. And uh, all you know extremely well. Do you think that if they did do a Pathfinder second edition, the fact that they are dedicated to a miniatures style would allow? Do you think there's enough of a market that they're saying, hey? We don't just allow you to use grid, grids, but we actually have built a game for it. Would that be an opportunity where maybe the idea that a second edition wouldn't work would work because they're so dedicated to miniatures combat? I don't think they liked it very much with fourth edition. Well, <laughs> but, but I think I think Ted is actually the best qualified to answer this because he's the most most dedicated to miniatures. It, it's really going to depend upon how it's presented. Yeah. Um, if you alter the rules 
a little bit and you avoid those concepts that every, you know, I don't want to say everybody that so many people despised about fourth edition and you know talking about the grid and and the maps as part of the core mechanics I, I think if you avoid that you might have a better chance uh, but ultimately you guys brought up you know good points yeah, making a second edition is probably yeah. gonna gonna result in more problems possibly causing that same rift between you know third and fourth you know of D and and what is that gonna leave Paizo's market as yeah. because if people say well all right well I'm not going to a second edition I'll just stick with these set of rules how much how much of that core populace of Paizo players are going to just stick with the rules. They're going to have to come up with something truly amazing that grabs players yeah. by the balls and just drags them right into the game. Yeah. Otherwise, that it's going to it, it would be a flop. It's they're in a, they're in a difficult position. They, yeah, they have to figure it out. Yeah. And so, they're a great company. Yeah. So, what do you guys out there think? Uh, are you Pathfinder players? Do you want a second edition? Would you bury your head in the sand if just just with the basic announcement of a second edition? Put your thoughts, comments down below. While you're at it, like, share, even subscribe. You can check us out at Naraki.com. So until next time, stay nerdy. It's, what has it been around? For about six years now? Oh, easily. Um, so it, it came out right before uh, fourth edition. And I think it's probably around seven or eight now, easily. Okay, yeah. so so it, it's getting aged. It's oh, going yeah. to no start question. showing its age. Yeah. Now this is really tricky because Paizo, you know, ha has has a decision to make. Like, it, yeah. it's almost like I, it's almost unheard of for a long-standing role-playing game yep. not to get a new edition eventually. Right. right. I totally agree. Here's here's the problem. If you're a if you're one of the guys that switched the Paizo, we play with that set of rules now. Should they? Well, that that begs the 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 question because what happens when that ha or what what's going to happen when they do that? Their market is going to split. There are the people who are going to, as with everything else, say, you know what? I don't want to move on to another set of rules. I don't want to go buy new books. I don't want to have to learn a new rule system. The, How do it, I convert my character from this edition to that edition? So Pathfinder, because you hate Watts for coming out with a new edition. Exactly. You know, uh, you know so do you love Paizo enough to accept a new edition, or you're like, oh, they sold out too? You know, yeah. How, you know, what is that going to be like? And the other, the other, so then there's the people that came in afterwards and they started with Pathfinder. Maybe not such a big, big deal for that crowd. Uh, the way I would summarize what you just said is, can they? Should they? So the first question is, do you, having seen what you, what having seen the Pathfinder community. Do you think they can sell a second edition to that community, or is that community so dedicated to staying with the old edition? What do you think? I, th I think with anything, there is always the possibility to put out a new edition. Easiest way to look at this, go on Facebook. You're going to find groups for first edition D&D, second edition D&D, third edition D&D, 3.5, fourth, fifth. You're going to find groups for Pathfinder. All of them have a solid market of people who continually... Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, for nerds, by nerds, hanging out with these nerds. Scott Garibay. And I'm Nerdarchist Ted. And today we're going to be talking about what happens when Pathfinder goes to second edition. Don't forget the Nerdarchy newsletter. It's a great way to learn, uh, to get great gaming tips from the Nerdarchy crew, to learn how to game with the Nerdarchy 2 crew. It's a wonderful weekly resource. So the question is, Pathfinder, 